and one on the gas, hey. Well, there's too much traffic and I can't pass, no. So I tried my best illegal move. A big black and white came and pushed my groove. So I signed my name on number 24, hey. And the judge said, boy, just one more, huh? Gonna throw your ass in the city joint. Look me in the eye, said, you get my point. I said, yeah. Write me up for one. Drive that slow, you know it's hard to steer. And I can't get my car out of second gear, no. It used to take two hours, takes all day. It took me 16 hours to get. All right, that was I Can't Drive 55, Sammy Hagar's famous protest song about that 55 mile per hour speed limit that was going on in this country back in the uh, late 70s and 80s. This song was from 1984, big hit for him. And I played that song straight off the chord charts of the Marstown Uke Jam. So check out that video link. Download the free ukulele song sheet, and you can play I Can't Drive 55. And if you're going to be in Marstown, New Jersey, on the first Wednesday of any month, come on out and join us at the Marstown Uke Jam. We'd love to see you there. So anyway, that was I Can't Drive 55. This song um, is going to be, for some of you, an introduction to something called power chords. Power chords are a big, big part of an electric guitarist's repertoire. Lots of songs uh, have, have uh, power chords. Maybe the most famous power chord riff in the history of rock might be Smoke on the Water. Dun, 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 you know. But power chords uh, may be less familiar to a lot of ukulele players, but we're going to learn them today because they're great for for rock songs like this. And they're easy, by the way. The thing about a power chord is there's only two notes involved, so you only have to worry about two strings. And each of the power chords that were involved in this song, and a matter of fact, a lot of power chords, only need one finger. So they're pretty simple. 
So we'll have, hopefully you'll have fun uh, following along as I show you how the power chords in this song get played. So we will talk about that. We'll talk about the power chords. We'll also talk, that there's also parts of this song where I, where I switch off to regular chords. So we'll go through what the chords are there. And then um, we'll also talk a little bit about the, the strum pattern for, for this song. Okay, so let's start. Let's talk about those power chords that you saw me playing throughout a lot, big part of the song. And when I was playing these chords, I was just playing the bottom two strings. And I want to make a point right now. I used a low G uke power chord. A song like this, if there's ever any reason to get a low G uke to add to your repertoire, add to your arsenal of ukes, this is it for these power chords. Because um, you'll see as we go through this, the first chord that appears, the power chord, is a C. And a power chord C is no left hand whatsoever. These two strings. And again, let me show you, let's get to the point right now. I'll show you why I chose a low G uke. Doesn't have that same oomph with this, with this high G. But again, there's nothing, if, if, if a high G is all you have, you can still play the song, it'll still sound okay. But let's go back to my low G uke here to go through these chords. Again, so the first chord, just open fourth string, open third string. The next chord that appears is an F power chord. Look how simple this is. Just clamp your index finger, whatever finger you want, on those two strings and go. The next power chord that appears in this song is an E flat. And that's just down here in the third fret. So it's all very simple. It's all done on these two strings. And it's just one. When I was, you know, the, the E flat goes to an F in this song. And you see, I, I just went from an index finger to there. You can also whatever works for you. But again, it's just all you're doing is covering those two strings. And then the last power chord that appears in this song is a G. Same thing up here in the seventh fret at the end of each verse. So there's your power chords. C, E flat, F, and G. So that's the power chords that appear in this song. There's also, again, when we get to the chorus, when some of the instrumentation in the recorded version comes in, I switch to, a, to full chords. Go run, right, me up for one, 25. There's an F chord. Two, zero, one, zero. Then the next chord that appears in that chorus is a C chord. We all know that. Zero, 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 three. And then at the end of that chorus, a G appears. Zero, two, three, two. Okay, so those are the, the regular chords. And oh, also there's, um, um, there's a quick, there's a transition after the, there's a bridge in that song that goes, flat. Here's another bit. Remember this chord? You probably all know this one. Three, two, one, one. That's a B flat chord. And that appears in the bridge. I can't drive 55. I slid up here for the C, but you can do, you, you can do. I can't fly, drive 55. So 
your choice if you want to go to this C or just hold this shape and go, because that's a C also. Just take your B flat and slide it up two frets. So either way works just fine there. But after that bridge, the I can't drive 55 going from the B flat to the C, there's this quick instrumental transition. And let me show it to you, then I'll explain what chords are in. Here, you definitely want to use this C shape. So watch. Let me slow that down. Here's that C. Five quick strums down to the B flat, back to the C, and then up here, this is an E flat. Most of you probably know this E flat. Zero, three, three, one. But here, with this quick, because this goes very quickly, so you want to. quick so so that gives you a a different kind of E flat chord to play there so let me do that one more time and since we're talking about this transition let's do the strumming pattern right now there's since there's five very quick strums of that C up, down, up, down. Down to the B flat. Down. Back to the C. All, I did all down strokes. So that's probably the trickiest strumming uh, part of the whole song. And it's just that quick transition to, to get into the third verse. So, <clears throat> that's all of the chords, the power chords and the regular chords that are in this song. Now, in terms of strum pattern, when you're doing a power chord, it's really best to do all downstrokes because again, they're, they're named power chords for a reason. You want a strong stroke. can't get that with an upstroke so so during the 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 introduction and the verses one foot on the brake one on the gas hey all down strokes okay and again just hitting those two strings Now, when we get to the chorus, you can do a more tr normal, if you will, strum pattern. So write, write me up for one, 25. Post my face, want it dead or alive. Take my license. What I'm hearing myself doing is a quick upstroke. What I did. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. One. Go on and write me up for one, one, five. Post my face, want it dead or alive. One, two, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. So that's a fairly common strum pattern that you've probably all done already. So again, that that's uh a little different from the straight power chord. Okay. So, and that's really it. So, you know, in the power chord sections of the song, go with all down strokes and then go with them just a straightforward one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four strumming pattern in the chorus. And you'll, and that, and that's it. You'll be able to play I Can't Drive 55. And you'll learn a little something about power chords. And again, there's no shortage of songs, especially rock songs, where power chords come into play. And as you saw, they're simple. Two strings, one finger.
So have fun singing I Can't Drive 55.